Zeus is the big one. Zeus is the king of the gods. His name is related to the word for light. He's a sky god. He's in charge of the weather. In particular, he's in charge of thunder and lightning and the power that we associate with the sky. Zeus is cool. I like to think of Zeus as the player god. You know, he's like the mac daddy of the gods because Zeus is always finding some beautiful mortal babe. And he goes down and seduces or woos the babe and, and, and gets into all sorts of trouble. Usually though, since he's a god, what can you do to him? Nothing, right? Nothing. Now I will show you the true power of a god. The other gods are afraid of him, rightly so, because he's more powerful than they are. He seems to be more intelligent than they are, although not always, because he can be fooled. He's frequently fooled, actually. I wanted Zeus to be the classical interpretation of Zeus. Zeus is the strong, powerful overseer of all of the gods. Uh, but I also wanted him to have a tiny bit of humanity, and the humanity being that he's afraid. He's kind of always looking over his shoulder. Zeus is basically willing to, you know, uh, let the world below be damned and crumble and, 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 the, and the humans that they lord over just, you know, suffer because he wants to hang on to his seat of power on Mount Olympus. Olympus will prevail! As the life drained out of Kratos, the arms of Hades reached out to claim their prize. Hades is Zeus's brother. And Hades and Poseidon, three of them, split up the universe. Hades, uh, by all accounts, got the short end of the stick. He got sent down to the underworld where all the dead people went, right? The stiffs. For the Greeks, it wasn't a place of punishment. It wasn't like our sense of heaven and hell. People went there when they died, and everybody went there. Good, bad, and indifferent. You know, Hades, is, he's got his, his uh, fierce helmet on with the, with the spikes coming out, and he's got the spikes all over his armor. And that's, the same kind of, the underworld is the same kind of feel. Grotesque shapes with very thorny, aggressive angles. Very, very uncomfortable. To go to the underworld and to come back is a very difficult thing. In general, the only people that do are either superhuman heroes or actual demigods. So it's a very unique thing. For most people, it's a one-way ticket. Poseidon is uh, Zeus's other brother. Poseidon is in charge of all the seas and all the oceans and everything in them. Because uh, in the Greek perspective, the oceans sort of held up the lands, uh, Poseidon is also in charge of earthquakes. He's got a trident, this three-pronged spear. And sort of like Zeus with his lightning bolts, you don't want to mess with Poseidon because when he gets stirred up, the whole world gets stirred up because he just takes his trident and he just starts churning that sea. Interestingly, a lot of people don't associate him with horses, but he was said to have fashioned the first horses and he shaped them. If you think of a horse galloping, sort of like waves falling. In the Iliad, Poseidon is likened to a child kicking over sand castles when he goes to destroy the walls of Troy. So, uh, like many gods, you do not want to mess with Poseidon. Kratos, you know not what you do. Athena, the gray-eyed Athena, the patron goddess of Athens. You know, her temple was on the Acropolis. She's the daughter of Zeus. She sprang out of his head in one of these great mythic moments that defy rationality. You can't explain it. That's what makes myths different. Zeus gets a whopper of a headache, and she comes basically fully formed outside of his head. In armor, helmet, breastplate, spear from the head of Zeus. And she's the goddess of war and wisdom which is an interesting pairing. Enough, Kratos! With every city you destroy, the wrath of Olympus grows. Soon I will no longer be able to protect you. Athena is the, the kind of conflicted character in the game. She always wanted to help out Kratos. She had a little bit of a, uh, empathy for him and I want to infuse a little bit of that kind of like more than empathy for Kratos. The sexual tension between Kratos and Athena is uh, bizarre, because it wasn't intended. And we finished the first game, and it's like, are they doing it, those two? Do not turn your back on me. I owe you nothing. Then you leave me no choice. Her loyalty is to the gods, so she wants to keep the peace. Uh, and she always kind of walks that fine line, and she's conflicted about whether or not she's going to cross that line for Kratos. Conspire against me! 
you don't know where she's coming from. You don't know if she's on the side of Zeus or if she's on the side of Kratos. You don't know if she has a thing for Kratos. So I'm very eager to see where her character sort of goes as we finish the, uh, the story of Kratos because I think there's more, definitely more to Athena than we've seen so far.